Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum. I'm Sam. And today we're having a look at the Balconis Texas Single Malt. Alright, um, now we're in a different setup uh, where I've moved... Another! <laughs> I've moved into another... Uh, I've moved to somewhere else, but um, this isn't going to be like the regular... We're still going to record at the same spot. Uh, this is just... It's just for temporary. now, for the next, yeah, it's, the, I mean, the residence isn't temporary, but the uh, shooting spot is. Um, so, we are actually going to be using tumblers, which I know, don't judge us, this is all we got right now. I forgot to bring my whiskey glasses up, I don't know how. Um, so, Balconas, we love them, we all love their distillery. Yeah. Curly got me this for my birthday, so you can thank Curly for the review. Um, we haven't even opened it, so we're going to pop that now. Um, they won, what year was it? Was it this, it was last year, wasn't it? The, uh, what's his name? Um, I think it says, yeah, Jared Himstead won Master Distiller of the Year. And this is his, one of his brainchilds, the Texas Single Malt. They just wanted to do their rendition of what a single malt could be. With like a Texas flair. Yeah. It's got the Texas colour. Oh, <laughs> Spilled it all over Curly. Cup it in there. Mm. Is there any uh, brimstoniness about it? A little bit, yeah. Oh, yeah From what I can get off. <laughs> it's like sherry-ish, like over yeah. fruits. It's Ooh. dark. It's super dark. Like, I mean, I don't know. I think just Texas in general really just... The heat. Yeah. What are yeah, the heat there, the weather, whatever they put there, they don't have much time with. Just because it'll it just over it, there's too much barrel impact if they leave it for too long. Yeah, it's got that definite balconis like nose behind yeah, it. Yeah, there's something like um it's, it's like leather it's or crayon y leather. Yeah, yeah le I think leather and like crayon. There's some that was in the brimstone that mm. I thought was brimstone, but I think it's actually balconis as a distillery. They've yeah. got that. Um it's a certain kind of nose. It smells hot. It smells, it smells like hot. the climate it's aged in. Yeah, it does. Um, it's really, <clears throat> it jumps out of the glass. Yeah. I'm getting like a bunch of sherry notes. Mm. Like not sherry, but like overripe fruits. It's a lot sweeter and yeah. top it's not up. approachable, but it's more approachable more than the brimstone. Yeah. It's like as approachable as a, you know, Avalua Abenard kind of thing. Yeah, still with that fire. It's like the palate. Yeah, it's like the palate should be approachable, but it's cooked on fucking yeah. lava, so it's not. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go in. Woo! <laughs> it's happening. It's like a gives you a bit of a that's sap bizarre. Of face. Yeah. Um. I love that. That taste is amazing. Mm. But the finish is nice as well. Dark, like dark coffee. Yeah, like really dark, like a Arabica bean coffee, espresso toffee. It's like a vanilla. Salted caramel. Vanilla, vanilla mocha. Almost. Yeah, it's mocha. Yeah, I think it's mocha. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, oh, that's so that's good. good. Is it? Thanks for that present, Curly. I'm gonna. I needed you. Oh, you need to force me to reseal it, otherwise it'll be gone <laughs> within a week. Like your game, um, whatever I bought last. Um, this is nice. This is really nice. Mm. Um, it's really toasty. Yeah. Like it's a. I don't know. It's just really toasty. It's like toasted oats and stuff on there. It's so caramelly and, and it almost embraces you. It does, but there's some heat. But it's not like ethanol kick. It's just like strength of flavor yeah you know like it, the flavors are really strong they're not it's not thin i reckon water in this would really mm. do something as well i really like the um that coffee note almost yeah at the end. and there's like pears in there as well like mm. stewed pears and stuff it's kind of like a an apple crumble kind yeah. of thing like the, the 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 toasted oats with the brown sugar and, and stuff like that this is amazing it's like sweet and salty at the same time. Yeah, 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 it is. And it's got that like, oh, it's so interesting. I don't, I don't think I've tasted a whiskey like this. Mm. I'd say that um, Texas 
or I, I haven't tried enough of Texas stuff, but Balconus at least has its own yeah. like flavor. Like I still get that kind of rubbery leather um, crayon taste that I did with the Balcon uh, with the Brimstone as well. This for um, me is a whole lot more palatable than the Brimstone though. Yeah, Brimstone. Like a, it was a nice whiskey, but I, love it. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't reach back and buy another bottle of it. I, I, I definitely will. Be. Um, but this is more approachable. <laughs> it's more approachable for what I imagine Balcon is. Is we've only had two of them now. Yeah. But compared to the Brimstone, this is a whole lot more. more the Brimstone has. It's got really complex and harsh notes. Brimstone has some weird notes in it. Like, mm. I'll give you that. I love it to bits. Like, I, it was fantastic. It was so much. It was just weird, and I loved it. Um, but yes, I totally get that it's really not hitting down straight on the home plate. That yeah. really went off on a curveball kind of avenue. This, I would still not say is hitting straight though. No, like, this is like, like there's some notes in here that I've never gotten in whiskey before. So it's definitely not typical anything. It's a Texas single malt. I don't even know what, you know. But um, it's a lot more, I think, as you said, approachable. The flavors are a bit more recognizable as notes you'd like. You know when someone explains whiskey notes and non-whiskey people are like, that sounds disgusting. Like when mm. people describe notes of Brimstone or Laphroaig and stuff, yeah. and they're like, ah, it, smells, it tastes like band-aids and hospital smells, mm. and you're like, yuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's kind of like, the descriptors for this whiskey is a lot more, it sounds more kind of palatable and familiar. More, yeah, familiar, and it makes sense that that would be an enjoyable thing to taste yeah. or smell. <laughs> um, the nose, I'd say, is like a lot more uh, overripe fruitiness. Um, that could be the uh, glasses though. Yeah, They're that's not, true, yeah. Also, I mean, open wide, so they hopefully, uh, I don't think this will be doing a huge amount. So it's not like to disregard every note we get, but it will be a little bit less refined than if we had a Glen Can or something yeah. with us. On the nose, I definitely yeah. get a plum. I get like plum, caramel, raisins. Vanilla, brown sugar. Yeah, vanilla, brown sugar, pear. Probably more molasses than brown Yeah, sugar. more, yeah, on the nose. On the taste, I get more brown sugar, yeah. but on the nose, more molasses. It's oh. a bit darker and more bitter. It's like that coffee sweetness. This is probably up there now, one of my favorite. This is amazing. That's not, no, not, not technically bourbon, but an American yeah, whiskey yeah, is up whiskey. there for one of my favorites. Oh, uh, me too. This is amazing. I think, um, who do we have? Um, one of our subscribers, um, she told us to go back to the Kregeliki when it's, you know, like halfway mm. full, uh, halfway empty. Yeah, no, 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 look at it. Um, and and do a re-review and seeing how it changed because for her, um, she said that it's it changed quite it a lot. A so so we, so we will be doing that, Marion. Um, and I just bring this up because I think we're gonna do. So I'd like to do that. the same with this because I feel like this is something that could change a lot. If we're doing that, I want to try that with Brimstone as well. If we've still got some left. There's like. like but I, I haven't There's tried a little bit left. I haven't tried it since we'll we last reviewed it, so I want to see if it's changed for me. Yeah. Since I've had this now, yeah. there might be like a little bit of this the might familiar, ease me into yeah, it. Yeah, the familiarity between both. We can find the mm. things that we found in that as well. Um, look, this if you're well and truly into, I I still say it leans more bourbony. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're into bourbons, but if you're into Scotch as well, still, geez, try this because you'll get notes that you have not ever had in Scotch. Like, I guarantee that because there are things in this that I just haven't had before, um, and that's interesting enough. Uh, now we paid, well, you paid the present. <laughs> How much you paid? It's like 135. Yeah, or something. 135. It goes from you'll definitely find it more expensive in Australia, so like 130, 160, mm. bounce around that region. America, obviously, you're gonna get this way cheaper than us. Uh, especially if you live in Texas, just run down to them. And I mean, Texas is a really good <laughs> place, but we can just run down, crack the drive. But like, you can probably find if anywhere in Texas, I assume the liquor, the liquor stores around there that has this, yeah. it's going to be quite affordable. Um, I do recommend picking this up. It's non chill filtered, uh, no color uh, balconers, no color added, no color, there's plenty, it's, of, there's color. plenty of color, no artificial color. <laughs> 
water. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no artificial colors, no chill filtration. Um, they're just ticking boxes. I think Balconis is one for, is a distillery that we all need to like keep an eye on because I assume yeah. that as they get bigger and I mean they're quite big now, but as they get more money pumped into it, they can experiment and things that they have already experimented on will start being released. Um, and I'd really like to be able to yeah, just get a hold of those things because Australia, it's, it's, it's damn hard. Um, but luckily enough that they've, they've kind of hit that point where they're big enough that um, they can be get, uh, gotten internationally, but also not too big that like they become like a massive kind mm. of just soulless, you know. But I mean, on that, I did have to wait an extra one or two weeks because they came direct from the supplier. Exactly. They yeah. didn't come from the store I bought it. It had to come from America. Yeah, that's a lot of, um, that's like a lot of things like this that are a bit more niche and small. Um, you order, if so if you're in Australia, from like Nick's Wine Merchants or Dan Murphy's, something like that, it'll say, um, I think what I've read from all of Balcones was it says ship from distiller, uh, yeah. from not distiller, from supplier. supplier. Yeah. Um, so Dan's doesn't ship stock it from there, they don't stock it. Um, you'll never find it in their actual um, stores. They've got a, they just send the, the notice through and they send it through, uh, the supplier sends it through. So you will have to wait more than you typically would. But I think this one's worth it. Alrighty, thank you very much for watching this episode of Everything Whiskey. If you liked it, please leave us a like. If you want to see uh, more episodes from us, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, forgive the change in scenery. We'll be back to normal within four, four episodes yeah, or something. Yeah, we two or three today. And so. next, we'll do a, a few today. And then I think next week we'll be back in the regular. In the filming next In the week. filming. Then who knows yeah, what that no, is. It's still going to be like a, f a few weeks for you guys. But either way, um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.